Hello everyone, I look a little bit funny today, but today I'm going to be testing the advanced voice mode option with ChatGBT that incorporates video. I've done a few tests before with just using the pure voice, but I want to see how the multimodal features work. I also saw a video on 60 Minutes of, I believe it was Greg Brockman of OpenAI, showcasing how the advanced voice mode with video can be really useful as a learning assistant. And I really want to test that myself. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know I really care about education, teaching, and learning. So I wanna see how good of a learning resource this new feature from OpenAI really is. When it comes to learning resources though, there are a few that are better than the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. It is a uniquely effective platform that uses a first principles approach to help you learn from the ground up. Each lesson is packed with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, which has proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. I've enjoyed using Brilliant over the years to keep my problem solving skills sharp. As someone who never took a formal computer science course, I really like Brilliant's computer science module that teaches me concepts in an interactive and fun way. It's honestly a way better use of my time than just scrolling through social media on my phone. Brilliant makes it so easy for you to dive into a new topic, review old ones, and develop a powerful daily learning habit. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. The holidays are just around the corner, and the gift of learning is just a click away. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to the testing. Okay, so I think we're ready here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fire up the advanced voice mode. And also turn on video. Sure, I, I can see your clipboard and some writing on the paper. How can I help? Hey, yeah, I was just wondering if you could help me figure out how to solve this problem. It's saying that a block is at the top of an inclined plane that is frictionless. It has a base length of three meters and a height of four meters. The block is initially at rest and then is released. What is the final speed at the bottom and how much time does it take to reach the bottom? Can you walk me through kind of step by step how I might approach the solution? Absolutely. Let's start with finding the final speed. Since the plane is frictionless, we can use energy conservation. The potential energy at the top converts entirely into kinetic energy at the bottom. The height is four meters. Using the formula V equals square root of GH, we can calculate the final speed. For time, we use the acceleration along the plane, which is G sine theta. The length of the plane can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, so um, let's just use G is equal to 10 meters per second squared, okay? So can you help me calculate what that uh, velocity is really quickly? Sure. Using g equals 10 meters per second squared and h equals 4 meters, the formula v is square root of gh becomes v equals square root of 2 times 10 times 4. Calculating that, we get v equals square root of 80, which is about 8.94 meters per second. So the final speed at the bottom is roughly 8.94 meters per second. Wait a minute. How did you get... Can you, can you repeat that? How did you do that again exactly? How did you get the 2? Oh, you said it's 2 gh, right? Yes, that's right. We use the formula V equals square root of GH to find the final speed. Here is 10 meters per second squared and H is four meters. So we You forgot the two though. You forgot the two when you first started this because you just said square root GH, right? You're right. I apologize for that slip. The correct formula is indeed V equals square root of two GH. Right. Using G equals 10 meters per second and H equals four meters, we calculate V equals square root of two times 10 times four. This gives V equals square root of 80, which is approximately 8.94 meters per second. Thanks for catching that. Thanks so much. You're welcome. If you need help with anything else, feel free to ask. Okay. So it was correct in the end, even though it did mislead me a little bit. It did forget this factor of two, which I didn't draw very well right there on the, um, on the piece of paper. So it just gave me the square root of GH term. And I was confused because I was like, wait a minute, that's not gonna give me the answer that I, what, that I know uh, what it should be because I did it before I did this problem with it. So, okay, it needed some guidance from me, but in the end, it ultimately did get the the right answer there of about 8.9 uh, meters per second. So, 
Okay, from there, why don't we carry on to the next part of the problem? Hi there. So can we do the next part of this problem? So I, we figured out how fast the block is moving at the bottom of the, the inclined plane, but how do we figure out how much time does it take to reach the bottom? Can you help me calculate that? Sure. To find the time, we first need the length of the inclined plane. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is square root of three squared plus four squared meters. Then we find the acceleration along the plane, a equals g sine theta, where sine theta is the fourth of the base. Finally, using t equals square root of 2s, where s is the hypotenuse. Let's work through it step by step. Okay, yeah, so you said, okay, so the height is five because it's a three, four, five triangle, so I got five meters, that's good. And then what do I do next? Great, next we find the acceleration along the inclined plane. The angle theta can be found using sine theta equals the opposite over hypotenuse equals four over five. So the acceleration is g sine theta. 10 times four equals eight meters per second squared. Now use the formula to- You're going a little bit, you're going a little bit too fast. Can you, can you go a little bit slower for me? That's, that's a lot of information really quickly. Sure, let's break it down. First, we calculate the acceleration along the plane using a equals g sine theta. Here, sine theta is four over five. So a equals 10 times four over five equals eight meters per second. Oh, I get it now. I see what you're saying. Yes, because that, okay. Yeah, you're right. I totally, I totally for, didn't realize that because you're right, it's just four over five. Wow, it, you're good. Thank you. I'm glad it makes sense. Now with A equals eight meters per second squared and the length S equals five meters, we can find the time using T equals square root of two SA. Let's calculate it. Yeah, two SA, that's two times uh, five times, that's five meters times eight meters per second squared. Uh, oh. Wait a minute, where'd they mess up here? No worries. For the time calculation, T equals square root of 2SA. Here, S equals 5 meters and A equals 8 meters per second squared. So it's T equals square root of 2 times 5. Simplifying that, we get T equals square root. That should be clearer. Uh, hold on here. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because 2SA, uh, yeah, wait a minute. I don't see how you get this. You're right. Let me clarify. We use T equals square root of 2SA. Here, S equals 5 meters and A equals 8 meters per second squared. So T equals square root of 2 times 5 over 8. That's square root of 1.25. Oh, it's over. It's... I see what you're saying. It's this. It's 2S over A, right? Exactly. It's square root of 2S over A. Now calculating that, t equals square root of 10 over 8, which simplifies to 1.25. That results in approximately 1.12 seconds. Does that help? Oh, I see. There's the square root of, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is 8 meters. This is meters per second squared. And so this should give you, uh, what should that give you? That should give you square root of 1.25. And you said that's 1.12? Exactly. Square root of 1.25 is approximately 1.12 seconds. So it takes around 1.12 seconds for the block to reach the bottom. Great job. Thank you so much. Okay, so I actually just didn't follow. I did it a little bit differently, but it was right in the end. I just didn't recognize the fact that you could use, you could already use the fact that the sine of the angle is just four over five. You didn't actually need to calculate the angle itself. So. It did a good job. I do think it was hard to follow because it talks really fast. And I just don't have, even though I knew how to do the problem, I just wanted to see how it guided me. And it did, I did get a little bit confused at times because I did feel like sometimes it dropped a factor or it didn't tell me exactly the right formula. Like this should have been a, um, this shouldn't have been a multiplication. This should have been a division. Maybe I just misheard that, but it just didn't, it just didn't come off very clear to me. In this, in this problem. But nevertheless, we did get the right answers in the end, though it was maybe not the most fluid experience. But moving on, I wanna try uh, a kind of problem that people have been asking for quite a bit, and that is a good old circuit problem. People really wanted me to do circuit problems, so this is a very basic one. We have three 
resistors in parallel. And the uh, problem here is to find the uh, current that goes through this circuit. So I did actually do this problem. I just want to make sure I have a, an answer here. Yes, yeah, so it's 15.6 amps is about the current. So let's go ahead and see if ChatGPT can uh, help me out here. So let's go get the video up again. Hi there. Hey, how can I help you today? Hey, I was wondering if you could help me figure out what the current flowing through this circuit is? Sure, I'd be happy to help. Let's start by analyzing the circuit. What do you have so far? Well, I have a 12 volt battery, and then I have three resistors in parallel. So we have 10 ohms, five ohms, and one ohms all in parallel with each other. Got it. To find the total current, we first need to determine the equivalent resistance of the parallel resistors. Then we can use Ohm's law. Do you want to go through the calculations together? Yeah, please help me help me out. All right. For resistors in parallel, the reciprocal of the total resistance is the sum of the reciprocals of each resistor. So we calculate one over the equivalent resistance equals one over 10 ohms plus one over five ohms plus one over one ohm. Let me know if you need help with the math. Yeah, help me out with that math. I don't know how to do this that, that well. No problem. Let's break it down. One, calculate the reciprocals. One over 10 ohms is 0.1. One over five ohms is 0.2. One over one ohm is one. Two, add them together. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus one, 1 1.3. Three, the equivalent resistance REQ is the reciprocal of that sum. REQ is equal to 1.3, approximately 0.77. Now that we have REQ, we can use Ohm's law to find the total current. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, so I did get the 1.3 and you're saying I just need to take the reciprocal of that to get the uh, equivalent resistance? Exactly. The reciprocal of 1.3 gives the equivalent resistance. I see. So, R so that should be uh, 10 over 13, right, REQ? Yes, exactly. REQ is equal to 5 over 13, which is approximately 0.77 ohms. No, no, no. It, now, should be, it, should be, it should be 10 over 13, no? Yes, exactly. REQ is equal to 10 over 13 ohms. Now using Ohm's law, I equals V over R, which is 12 volts divided by 10 13 ohms. Let me know if you need help calculating that. Okay, so based on this, I'm getting an answer of, uh, let's say it's 12 times 13 over 10 amps. So that's 156 over 10 amps, so 15.6. Can you verify if I did all my math correctly? Yes, your calculations are correct. The total current, I, is indeed 12 times 13 amps, which simplifies to 15.6 amps. Great job. No, it's 12 times 13 over 10 though, right? Oh, right, you're correct. So the total current is indeed 12 times 13 over 10, which simplifies to 15.6 amps. Everything looks perfect. Great job. Okay, so in that example, it definitely got confused at some parts and I, I knew what the answer was, so I, I kind of was trying to gauge at every step if it was saying the correct thing. And I caught it a few times saying things that were just incorrect, like it dropped a factor of two, wasn't doing some of the math exactly right. We did get to the right answer. Um, but I think this is kind of, at least initially, how I think this model could be used in, a, in, a, in this kind of context. You can use it as an assistant. It's not going to be an all-knowing entity. It can sort of guide you, but it will also make mistakes. So in a way, it's kind of like a study buddy that's roughly perhaps at your level. I don't really know else how else to describe it, but it seems like you're working with a partner in a class if you're doing this assignment together. I just want to do one more circuit problem that's going to involve a little bit more of a complicated circuit, and we'll see how it does. Okay, for giggles, I think I'm going to try and use Santa mode, even though I don't know how to use it properly yet. So let's try and get Santa mode going here, if I can figure this out. Okay, video. Okay, we're gonna get Santa mode in here. Why not? Hey, Santa. Santa? Are you there? Oh. Yes, I'm here. What can Santa help you with today? Well, Santa, for Christmas, I would really like the solution to this problem of uh, what is the equivalent resistance between the points A and B in the circuit, because we have these circuits 
or sorry, these resistors that are in parallel and in series, and I want to know what the equivalent resistance is. Can you help me with that? Oh, of course. Let's solve this together. First, the 15 ohm and 10 ohm resistors are in parallel, so let's find their equivalent resistance. 1 over R parallel is 1 over 15 plus 1 over 10. That gives an R parallel of 6 ohms. Now, we add that in series with the 5 ohm and 25 ohm resistors. R total is 5 plus 6 plus 25. So, the equivalent resistance is 36 ohms. Ho, ho, ho. Wait, wait, Santa, hold on a second there. Did you just say that we just add the... Because we make a new circuit like this, right? You said because we make... This is a 5 ohm one, and then doing the equivalent resistance there, that's 6, right? Yes, that's correct. Now you have the 5 ohm resistor in series with the 6 ohm equivalent resistor from the parallel combination. And then you add that result in series with the 25 ohm resistor. That gives you the total equivalent resistance between points A and B. <laughs> but Santa, wait a minute. I thought for a second here, like this is not, these three are not in series. This is, these, these two are in parallel with this one, right? So it should look something like this, right? Where we need to find the uh, equivalent resistors between the 11 and the 25 ohm resistor in parallel, no? Ah, you're right. The 5 ohm and the equivalent 6 ohm resistors are indeed in series, giving 11 ohm resistor. Then, this 11 ohm resistor is in parallel with the 25 ohm resistor. Let's calculate the equivalent resistance. 1 over R total is 1 over 11 plus 1 over 25. Solving that gives the total equivalent resistance. <laughs> Can you solve it for me? Like, what is this value? Do you know? Certainly. Let's calculate it. 1 over R total is 1 over 11 plus 1 over 25. Calculating that gives about 7.19 ohms. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, well, Santa, I did this math myself, and it looks like the answer is closer to like 7.64 ohms. Oh, 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 indeed, you're absolutely right. The correct equivalent resistance is about 7.64 ohms. Well done. I'm, oh, I'm going to oh. double check this really quickly. So I'm just going to do 1 over 11 plus 1 divided by 25. Hope I did that right. And I do 1. You're doing great. Yeah, 7.64. Yep. Oh, oh, well done. The equivalent resistance is indeed about 7.64 ohms. Great job calculating. Ho, ho, ho. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for all your help. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was entertaining, if not a little bit frustrating at certain points. Clearly, it wasn't able to get everything correctly. It didn't understand that, you know, that, that there was a difference here between series and parallel circuits. So we use it at your own caution, I would say. I think it's useful for someone who, who knows roughly what they're doing, but might want to have a second pair of eyes. And you might need to challenge it every now and then and say, hey, actually, I think you're wrong there, or I don't think you said the right thing. And it actually kind of helped me reinforce my own understanding there, because I was I find myself saying, no, 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 this is not right. Like, this is why you do this, because this is, you know, this is in parallel, and it's not in series, and blah, blah, blah. So, um... I can imagine these things getting better over time. Who knows, maybe this is just gonna be a moot video, a moot point in the next two months. But at, for the time being, if you're using O1, uh, or not O1, if you're using advanced voice with video, uh, use it at your own caution. It's getting these, you know, high school, college level questions in physics incorrect, or not entirely correct, I should say. And so with that, I hope that gives you an idea of how one can possibly use it. I wouldn't personally use it 100% in terms of trusting it fully, but I think as these things develop and grow, they could become very powerful learning aids. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time.